Kurzzeit of Virtual Hardwood, it's the MLC Podcast. This is episode 523. I am Andrew, Andrew in our forum, Andrew and Alessi on X. With me as always, my co-host Derek, Deep3 in our forum, and Deep3G and Deep384 on X. Derek, good to be talking to you as always. What are we talking about this week? This episode is focused around this week's community question, Andrew, and that is, what is your favorite NBA jersey of all time? And if you can't just pick one, name your top three. You know, we can also tie this into basketball gaming because we, we've talked about the amazing mods in the past, like the UBR and the URB, which add classic seasons and some of these mods have single seasons going back to the 50s. In the URB's case, they go back to the mid-80s. Thunder Shack's rosters for NBA 2K20, they go back to the 80s and all the way up to present. You know, Still those rosters on NBA 2K19, they go, once again, back to the mid-80s. And he's working his way up into the 2000s now. So... A lot of the jerseys that we're going to talk about on this show are some of our favorite jerseys to put on in basketball video games. Also, as 2K has expanded their library of classic teams in the games by default, it gives users um, more of a selection in-game, even if they're not on PC using mods and whatnot. And, and I think that's cool as well. But, but yeah, this episode is all about jerseys, Andrew. And that was a big thing when we actually got to select jerseys in games before we actually started games. In the late 90s, they started bringing in the alternates, adding those. They'd be automatically selected for the appropriate games, usually Sunday games during season modes. They'd be randomly selected during exhibition play now games. But when you could actually choose from a selection of jerseys, retros included, it just made it so much more fun. And you mentioned rosters going way back to the beginning of the NBA, a jersey that is not one of my favorites, Derek, though I do kind of enjoy putting it on the floor, ironically, is the Chicago Stags uniform, that red and blue jersey. Oh, and I do love that jersey. I actually think some of the simple designs from back in the day are actually some of the best at times. Like, think about the early to mid-80s Philadelphia 76ers jerseys, the red ones. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, the, the home and away. I mean, sure, they're simple. You know, they don't have um, crazy designs on the shorts or on the jersey itself and everything. But, you know, you want to put those jerseys on the floor. That red stands out, right? It looks awesome. And I just think those jerseys are incredibly clean. Another point I, I wanted to make, too, is... I think that there is absolutely a renewed interest in the designs of the past. In fact, how many times over the last couple of years in the current NBA have you seen them try to wear these classic jerseys, yeah. e either with slight alterations or the exact same jersey? And they're not only doing it with jerseys, Andrew, they're doing it with the courts, right? They're bringing back some of the court designs for certain games, some of the classic court designs, or they're implementing some of the art from the past on current courts. I think that the, and I think you would agree, I think that the jersey designs today are often incredibly blah. It yeah. feels like something that you could design um, with only a few font selections in Microsoft Paint right? I think they're blah. I think they're la lacking in creativity. And I think a lot of the same way about the courts in today's NBA as well, especially in comparison to what we had for some courts in the 90s. Whether you like them, and, like them or not, a lot of the 90s courts were a lot busier and a Distinct. lot more fun Yeah, yeah, in comparison to today's NBA. But I do find it funny that, um, you know, you, you hear a lot in the media about, you know, the, the kind of crapping on the past, sure. but they always. just, they always want it. <laughs> so they're always crapping about the past NBA, but it's funny that they, they want to bring all those designs to the current NBA because they were cooler, right? They always want to talk that we're always comparing current players to the past players and teams and everything. Um, seems like they're actually, and they're pretty fond of the past NBA, but just don't want to admit it. That's what I think. I agree. I agree. And, and you look at the Utah Jazz seem to be wearing their mountain throwback 
very often. It seemed like I see it all the time. The, how, how how often do we see Donovan Mitchell in that before he went to the Cavs? It he seems was like, constantly yeah. wearing. It seems like he's wearing it more often than the. Well, well that was not a very good rebrand. That their, their current branding is, you know, to your point, one of the most bland in the NBA. I don't know what they were thinking, but with that one, basically, all those black and white designs with the logos. And Utah has had some pretty good designs over the years and that mountain logo that mountain jersey certainly one of my favorites not to spoil the uh, future um <laughs> reveals of this episode but yeah th- they, they've gone from some pretty good designs even the ones they went to after that to whatever they're doing now i think um the art department should be ashamed of themselves That's this, this minimalist design and, and you know you know me derek I, i'm all about minimalist minimalist money and all that but it's just bland yeah, agreed. And you know what's funny is when I get into my list, Andrew, of my favorite NBA jerseys of all time, um, the teams weren't always successful in these jerseys. Sure. Um, but because the jerseys had a unique style, um, because that's the, the jerseys themselves were memorable because of that art and whatnot, it makes me remember those teams more fondly and just, you know, have – more memories of them in general. So I'm going to start out and name, I'm going to name my top three favorite jerseys of all time. And this might even be like my top three favorite unique jerseys of all time. And then I'll get into some honorable mentions and whatnot, but let's go back and forth. I'll say a favorite and then you can say one of yours. So the 94, 95 to 98-99 98-99 Cleveland Cavaliers jerseys. There was a slight difference in 97-98 98-99 from the previous few years and it was the fact that they made the shorts on the jerseys just a little bit busier basically. Um and instead of on the instead of saying Cavs on the front it says Cleveland, but both jerseys are basically the same in their design, but some memorable players that played with those jerseys, uh, you know, Mark Price, the late Bobby Phils, uh, Terrell Brandon, Hot Rod Williams, um, Dan Marley, if you remember correctly. For after years, yes. Of the Sun. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he played um, one year with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, and then obviously they ended up getting Sean Kemp in 97, 98. And he was immediately an all-star that season averaging 18 points per game. But first, I, I, before they got Sean Kemp, so the years from 94, 95 through 96, 97, they had winning seasons in all three of those years. But they, and they made the playoffs in 94, 95, and 95, 96, but missed the playoffs in 96, 97, despite having a winning record. They went 42 and 40. So obviously, Mark Price was going through injuries and whatnot, but he did don that amazing new style. Like he, he, he was um, a big part of their team still in 94, 95. So I have some basketball cards of Mark price in this awesome Cleveland Cavaliers Jersey. And um, I cherish them. They look absolutely awesome. And for those people who um, want kind of a visual without looking it up, it's the Cavs jerseys that have a light blue kind of stylized thick stripe that goes across the middle of the jersey. And then there's their Cavs logo, the ball going into the hoop on the shorts. And it also has that light blue stripe on the shorts, on the lower part of the shorts. So when they got Sean Kemp, there was a slight change to the jerseys, like I stated. They went 47-35 and 35 and made the playoffs in 97-98, losing to Indiana 3-1 to one in the first round. That team also had Wesley Person, Zadrunas Ogoskis, Brevin Knight, and Bob Sura. If you remember correctly, Andrew, Bob Sura could hoop. Yeah, great and dunker. he had some yeah. vicious dunks in traffic and whatnot. He was one hell of an athlete. He could shoot the three ball and everything. Really fun to use in video games. I always loved watching him play. I always think of him nodding. That big dunk he had in 97, he just walks off after getting the N1, just nodding. I'm like, yeah, that was... I did I did something pretty cool there. 
Sura was a cocky player, yeah. but that also made him fun to watch, right? Yeah. He was a confident, cocky player. Um, and I think along the lines of like Jason Williams, right? Like I can put them in the same boat as far as kind of their swagger. Yeah. In my opinion. So, um, I, <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so then Kemp averaged 20 points per game the next season in 98, 99, but they went, um, a really disappointing 22 and 28 in that 50 game season. And I think that that um, was the start of Kemp's downfall. Agreed. That shortened season. I think he got out of shape. Uh, I was watching, however, his last game with the Cavs in that season. And he still looked awesome. Sure, he had put on a few pounds, but people like to call him fat Kemp. He was not fat, Andrew. Right. He had put on some weight, but he definitely wasn't fat. Um, Draymond Green nowadays looks more out of shape than that Kemp, in my opinion. And he was still super quick. He was still throwing it down a bunch. Um, He was still um, he was lighting it up from the mid range in the game that I was watching as well. But he just he still looked really good in 98, 99 with the Cavaliers. I also want to point out that because of you, I ended up going on this huge binge of watching Blazers Kemp. And I'm watching a bunch of his game highlights and whatnot. And I think also it's overstated how quote unquote fat he was with that team as well, especially in 2000, 2001. In fact, he looked pretty damn good. I know he only averaged six or seven points per game that season, but he still looked pretty damn good with the Blazers in that season. Sure, he he was, you know, wasn't quite as fast, he wasn't quite as quick as he was when he was more slim, but he was hardly fat. Right? Like, I know that I I just think it's ridiculous how overdone that is. You if you want to talk about fat Kemp, fat Kemp was with Orlando. Okay. Yes. Yeah. He that was, was definitely that, out of shape. That's then. when yeah. Yeah, that's when he really got out of shape. But anyway, so that Cavs jersey, absolutely love it. If you take a look at my NBA 2K19 season that I'm playing with my brothers using an all-time fantasy draft roster, what jerseys are we using? We're using those Cavs jerseys, I noticed, right? yeah. Yeah, and um, we have Shaq and, and Jordan, and we have uh, Rick Fox and Walter Herman, because my brother – couple of my brother's favorite players Kyle Korver another one of his favorite players and stuff and we have all those guys donning those Cavs uniforms and we're playing in Gund Arena which is an amazing classic floor um, in NBA history and we'd have to do we could do a whole another episode on floors as well right like our favorite floors in NBA history but yeah I love those jerseys and I love that floor oh definitely iconic and memorable to me because that was around about the time I was really getting into basketball so I I definitely remember those designs Uh, I think my favorite jerseys are going to uh, reflect that as well that it's it's that time that you really get into basketball and they did have some fantastic designs in the 90s and and they are they are crapped on as you say and I mean that comes down to the era in general but sure that that is just the way fashion goes but you know, there's a lot of 90s fashions, a lot of 90s styles coming back into uh, into style at the moment. And to your point, we do see that in the NBA as well. And for my my first favorite, you know, this is not going to be surprising. It's going to sound like very much a Homer pick. But, you know, the Chicago Bulls red road jerseys from the 90s. And I know that's, uh, you know, a very boring pick for a Bulls fan to make. But is there a more iconic jersey from the 90s? thanks to Michael Jordan, specifically the one they had from 92 onwards. Just such a classic design. I know it's not the most creative design compared to, say, that Cavaliers jersey or some of the other jerseys that came along in the 90s, but I just love that classic red jersey. So I actually prefer, from a visual perspective, the mid-80s Bulls with the um, darker red and the cursive Chicago writing. Um, I actually have a Michael Jordan jersey in the closet. The with, rookie jersey, you know, yeah. From, yeah, the rookie jersey. And whatnot. I, I think that for me to the eye, that's more appealing and I like that color red. But I can't blame you. I actually thought you were going to choose the the black striped bulls. Oh, it's jerseys, it's up the there. Alternates. It is up there, but um, um, yeah. I, I, I think the those are super unique and it, it's cool seeing footage of Jordan playing in that jersey 
because he's not in red. I mean, the stripes are red, but the jersey is mostly black. So um, I think one of the responses to the mailbag was stated that their um, their favorite was the striped Bulls jerseys, uh, the black striped Bulls jerseys from the mid 90s. Oh, and, and no surprise that they are up there for me as well, and they will be an honorable mention later on in the show. But the funny thing about that red jersey is, of course, it is their their road jersey. So it's not the jersey they were wearing when they were winning at home and having all those excited Chicago Bulls fans in the United Center cheering them on during that second three-peat that I was watching so enthusiastically. It's That is that that was their home whites at the time. So it's funny that I do think of the red jersey, but... At the same time, you look at a lot of uh, promotional materials using MJ, including, say, the NBA 2K11, NBA 2K12 cover, and which jersey is he wearing? It's the red road jersey. You know, what's funny is if he actually had been drafted by Portland, he would have been wearing a red jersey for a few years. Yeah. Because that was Portland's main color before they switched to their black road jerseys in 86, 87. One of my favorite teams to go back and watch on YouTube is actually that mid-80s Blazers team with Clyde Drexler and Kiki Vandeweghe and Sam Bowie and whatnot. And I'll get into that team a little bit later, the more the deeper we get into this topic. So my next favorite, Andrew, and I'm going to get some booze from the crowd, probably a few tomatoes thrown at me, but the Rockets pajama jerseys from 95-96 Two, oh two, oh three. Boo! And, no, no, I actually love them as well. I actually love them. As yeah, well. I knew you liked them. I knew yeah. that had to be fake, right? Because I, I knew you liked them. Yeah. But there were some super memorable players that played in these jerseys. So as much as you don't like the jerseys, there were some Hall of Famers that played in these jerseys. Some super exciting players, etc. So I'm going to go down the list. So Akeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler, Charles Barkley, Scotty Pippen, unfortunately. For one season, Robert Ory, uh, Sam Cassell, Kenny Smith, Katino Mobley, Glenn Rice. A lot of people forget that. Steve Francis, Yao Ming in his rookie year, etc. So there's a lot of big names that don these jerseys over that stretch. Uh, their best team in this jersey, Andrew, was the 96-97 Rockets, which featured Hakeem, who was still you know, putting up numbers. He was still super effective. He was still quick and whatnot. Um, Clyde Drexler in his second to last season. Um, But he never really went down, Andrew. He even averaged 17 points per game in his final season in 97, 98. And then they obviously had Charles Barkley, who when healthy was basically a consistent 20 and 12 guy or 20 and 13 guy. And this team started the season out 21 and two, Andrew. 21 and 2 when they were healthy. They're absolutely cruising until injuries hit and then they went on a streak of losses. They still finished the season 57 and 25. They they knocked out KG and Stefan Marbury in round 1, then Kemp and Payton Sonics in round 2 in a very memorable series. And then they lost to the Jazz in six games in the Western Conference Finals, as you know, the famous three from the top of the key by John Stockton over to Charles Barkley, who had both hands up, but he was kind of late getting there. And that team also had Kevin Willis, Mario Ellie, and sharpshooter Eddie Johnson. So that 96-97 Rockets team, in my opinion, is the most memorable to wear that pajama-style jersey. And for our listeners who want a visual, it's basically stripes going from top of the jersey to the bottom of the jersey and all through the shorts. Um It's the, you know, the R, the Rockets logo um, on the leg of the jersey and then the giant um, Rockets logo on the front with the, you know, the rocket ship taking off from the right, like around the sea area. And it has the the number on the front of the jersey up on the right hand, top hand corner of the chest. So. I love these jerseys. That 96-97 Rockets team is one of my favorite to put on the floor when using classic teams mods. And I also want to point out something, and it's something I appreciate when stars come together. So sure, you know, Barkley, Drexler, and Olajuwon were later in their career, but they did a really good job sacrificing for each other, you know, in order to kind of reach 
a common goal, which was to win a championship. Definitely. And it's very similar. Yeah, it's very similar to what the Celtics did in 07 and 08. So I, very much, yeah. Yeah, I want to draw that comparison. So Hakeem averaged 23.2, Barkley averaged 19.2, and Drexler averaged 18.0. And then the 07 08 Celtics, it was Pierce, who averaged 19.6, Garnett, 18.8, and Ray Allen, 17.4. So those guys were ready to drop any ego that could have been there, right? They were ready to sacrifice their numbers and whatnot and really you know, do everything they possibly could to win a title. And I did appreciate that. And when you watch them play, you know, you watch games from the 96, 97 season, you can see how unselfish all three of them were. And what's crazy is, is Charles Barkley was getting, it was later in his career. He was 33 years old. He played 53 games that season, but Andrew, he averaged 19 points and 13.5 rebounds a game, 4.7 assists. Drexler was still, he averaged 18 points, um, five rebounds and 5.7 assists and Akeem averaged the 23 points, nine rebounds and three assists. So all of them were approaching their mid thirties. Drexler was 34. Elijah one was 34. Um, but they were still so effective. And if they had stayed healthy, I don't know, Andrew, I think if they had gotten that full season together to, and not had those injuries, I think that they would have made the finals. And I think that they yeah. would have, it would have been one hell of a memorable series between, you know, Rodman, Pippen, and Jordan, and Barkley, Drexler, and Olajuwon. Definitely would have been. And you go back to that season, and you can see they had some pretty fun matchups in the regular season. So, for playing for all the marbles in the NBA Finals would have definitely been very special. And you're right, they did have something left in the tank. In fact, I would suggest that if they were playing with a, a modern pace and with the modern NBA. Uh, offensive oriented as it is and less defensive oriented that you probably have all three of them averaging over 25 it wouldn't surprise me with uh, a modern approach to the game but I'm glad we had the approach we did back in the 90s don't get me wrong and it is funny how back then players hitting their mid-30s it was like oh you, you know you're over the hill you've got to be looking at retirement you've got to get rid of them I mean you look what happened with uh, with Danny Manning and Dominic Wilkins, that trade, why the Hawks traded away Dominic Wilkins when he was still playing at a very high level in 1994. Uh, they, they traded him away for Danny Manning, a fine player, but injuries derailed his career, certainly. That They thought, oh, we have to get rid of Neek because he's, what, 32, 33, and we, we can't possibly have somebody that old leading our team. Now you've got so many more players playing beyond 35. Obviously, LeBron being the oldest in the NBA at the moment, turning 40 later this year but that's becoming much more common but back then it was like oh mid-30s you know get out of here well this is where we're going to disagree i mean the league is younger than ever on average and i mean they are um the average age in the nba actually used to be higher oh true in the the um the 80s 90s um two or early 2000s and whatnot and you can mention players like LeBron and like Kevin Durant and like Steph Curry. Um, but look around the rest of the league and see who's leading their team. Trey Young, you know, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. If you go down the list, um, it's actually the league, other than a few players, is just being run by guys that are probably under 30. I mean, I mean that's, that's true. I, I mean, I, I guess I'm thinking more about players from the next generation that stuck around longer. We had more players coming through in the 90s, early 2000s, who ended up playing 15, 16, you know, going on 20 years, and Vince Carter, 22 years, and Kevin Garnett, 21, things like that. Right. I think the thing is, though, with guys like Vince Carter and uh, Kevin Garnett is they were bailed on, right? So Garnett got bailed on in his mid-30s to be sent to the Nets, right? And then he went to the Wolves. And then Vince Carter got bailed on actually quite early, with the Nets, sent to Orlando, then sent to Phoenix, then, um, yeah, then ended up bouncing around a ton and then finishing his career in Atlanta. So As a role I don't player, think yeah. yeah, exactly. The thing with Neek, though, what's crazy is, is he had that resurgence right after the trade, and he was averaging like over 29 points a game with the Clippers, right? Kind of like, something and they also, then they played, <laughs> yeah, something to prove. And then they played the Hawks when he was in a Clippers uniform and he had, uh, he had like 30 plus points, I want to say, and they ended up beating him and he looked absolutely awesome in that game. And then, you know, he came to my Celtics in 94, 95, um, through free agency. 
And he averaged, I think, what, 17 points a game with us. He didn't look very explosive at all. I don't know what happened in that offseason. I don't know if it's whether he didn't mess with, mesh with the team. But he definitely added quite a bit of weight from when he was with the Clippers. Go look at the footage, you know, when he was with the Clippers and then, you know, when he joined the Celtics. And then it's weird. 96-97 comes around. He gets picked up by San Antonio. And he looks like the Neek that I wish was with the Celtics, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> like – I don't know if his year overseas where he won a a title and whatnot, you know, helped him get back into better shape and whatnot, but he looked better with the Spurs in 96, 97 than he did with the Celtics in 94, 95. I always found that odd. I think he was a bit unmotivated. I think, as you said, he didn't mesh with the team as well as everybody hoped, and maybe he just didn't uh, take his conditioning seriously. Yeah, it's very possible. Um, so I'm going to finish up with the Rockets. So from 95, 96 through 98, 99 with those pajama jerseys, they made the playoffs in 99, 2000 with Barkley only playing 20 games, Steve Francis as a rookie and Akeem getting old. They, they only won 34 games and missed the playoffs. And then they went 43 and 39 in 0203 in the first season with Yao Ming and Francis, but missed the playoffs. So 43 wins. That's not bad, Andrew. Hmm. especially with Steve Francis um, still being uh, you know, a young player the West and was tough. Young being a rookie. Yeah, the, ref, the, West, the West was really, really tough at that point. That season, Steve Francis averaged 21 points a game, played 81 games. Yao, in his rookie season, at that height, I'm always impressed with players at that height playing this many games. He played all 82 games, Andrew. 29 minutes a game, 13.5 points, 8.2 rebounds. And... Uh, it makes me think of actually another rocket, Ralph Sampson, who played all 82 games at the height of 7-4 in the mid 80s in his first three seasons. That's super impressive to stay. And it obviously he ended up having injuries later, but to be able to do that at that height has always been, you know, super impressive to me. But, you know, another thing I was thinking about, you know, how Barkley, he only played 20 games that season in um, 99, 2000 and whatnot. How hard does it have to be for an accomplished player, former MVP, NBA finalist, you know, Charles Barkley? How hard do you think it was for him to sit back and watch his team win only 34 games and miss the playoffs and just kind of see his career winding down that way? Like that's that's got to be hard for any veteran. And and to suffer that injury as well, because that was supposed to be his farewell season. And I'm glad he was able to come back for that small appearance and get, get the basket, get the rebound. And, and kind of leave on his own terms. But yeah, that that was not the farewell that he was uh, hoping for, clearly. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel bad. And then, you know, obviously, Akeem with the Raptors, you know, that's that was really hard to see him end his career that way. Um, but hey, he got to play with, you know, a young prime Vince Carter. Yep. So I'm sure that's memorable for him. So Andrew, what's your next favorite jersey of all time? So this is probably not going to be a surprise either, but the original... And I'll say original and also late 90s as well, Charlotte Hornets jersey. And back in the 90s, obviously the Bulls were very popular, very popular internationally. Here in Australia, you probably became a Bulls fan at that time because they were so popular. They were back on top. They were winning championships, obviously. But the other team, the the other team that always had merch available here was the Charlotte Hornets. And I just love that. That branding, that original branding they had, because you had that, the, the Hornet obviously was a very distinct logo, the pinstripes, and they also added that alternate for a couple of years there in the mid-90s. But yeah, the Hornets, their original branding, I, I think they, the current branding is nice too, but they really had some awesome branding in the 90s. Memorable players wearing that jersey as well, right? Yeah. Like starts with like guys like Rex Chapman, right? Yeah. And then... You get guys like Grandmama Larry Johnson and then Alonzo Mourning and obviously Muggsy Bogues. Um, Kendall Gill wore that jersey. Then you had Glenn Rice having his best years yep. in that jersey um, and whatnot. Uh, Vladi Divac uh, wore that jersey as well. So a lot of memorable players in that Charlotte Hornets jersey. And some good they seasons. also had, yeah. yeah, and they had some good seasons. And um, remember the. Unfortunately, it was against my Celtics, but uh, Alonzo Mourning hitting the game winner in the playoffs um, versus the Celtics, I want to say, in the first round and whatnot in in the early 90s. And uh, yeah, no, I love that branding and I love that court that they brought in in the mid 90s. The honeycomb, um, yeah. Yeah, the honeycomb paint, you know, with the basketball 
at the free throw line, the colored area inside the three point line where one side of it was like a dark blue and the opposite side was like a lighter blue with a gradient. And th- that yeah. court. Yeah. And it had the big hornet in the middle of the court. Like I love the uniqueness of that court and it, it's just like it screams 90s, right? Because the nine, the mid to late 90s was just like all about style and, teal. and unique art and teal, right? <laughs> exactly. So no, I love that um, that whole Charlotte Hornets get up. To be honest with you, yeah, and I'm glad to see them still a classic team in NBA 2K. They were brought in in NBA 2K12 to be uh, Michael Jordan's uh, opponent in the NBA's greatest mode and. Some people questioned that at the time. Are the Hornets this great rival of the Bulls? And at the time, they were a Central Division rival, of course. And MJ did have a a 50-point game against them in 1993 and had that big dunk over Zoe. But like you say, great players, that 93 Hornets, you can sort of see that that there's kind of the culmination of that early team, the game winner, obviously, by Zoe that season. So I'm glad they went with that 93 Hornets uh, for that challenge and that got them into the game, got some iconic players into the game as you say like lj like zo like mugsy so yeah that, that hornets jersey very memorable and they made some slight alterations in the late 90s but it was still the same basic design that's st- that same iconic design they brought in and you know I, I think all of the expansion teams that came along in the late 80s actually nailed their branding oh i agree i thought miami heat's branding was excellent um orlando as well no i i definitely agree and i always i always liked um minnesota's Mm. as well so i'm gonna get to my next one andrew so the 1991 92 to 93 94 philadelphia 76ers jerseys so a lot of people consider these forgetful but i find them unique and and i often use them in video games that have them modded in uh, Charles Barkley played one season in these jerseys and the Sixers went 35 and 47 in that season. Um, Charles averaged 23.1 points, 11.1 rebounds, 4.1 assists, 1.8 steals and shot 55.2 from the floor. Um, and he played 75 games. So he was right in the smack dab in his prime. He was 28 in that season. And these jerseys are the ones where it says Philadelphia Sixers on the front. And attached to the Sixers wording is a thick blue streak that goes down to the band of the shorts and there's stars in it, right? And then to the left side of the Sixers wording is the number of the player in the white or red area, depending on their home in a way. And the Sixers with the blue streak attached and the stars is on the opposite side from the top on the shorts. So... I obviously like jerseys for some, you know, weaker teams. Like I mentioned the um, the Cavs, ones that I love, and then this one. This th- this team did not do well. They were um, 35 and 47 in 91, 92, 25 and 56 the following season, and then in 93, 94 they were 25 and 57. Some memorable players again wore this jersey. So Charles Barkley. Hersey Hawkins, who was a 20-point scorer in the NBA, sharpshooter. Uh, Johnny Dawkins, um, Armin Gilliam, Manute Bowl, Andrew, he, he wore this jersey. Uh, Jeff Hornacek, Clarence Weatherspoon, and Dana Barros. Um, so Dana Barros averaged 13 points a game roughly around there in 93-94. But then, as you remember, when they switched jerseys in 94-95, he was an all-star with that team. And then he ended up going to Boston after but two of my favorite players that wore this jersey that some people may forget wore it orlando woolridge he played 74 games in this jersey in 93 94 26 minutes a game average 12.7 he wasn't a starter he came off the bench he only started one game but also the return of moses malone and i have a basketball card with him in this jersey and it just looks incredibly awkward right because you, you don't picture Moses in this jersey. You picture him in that classic um, jersey that they wore from like 82, 83 to like 85, 86 and whatnot when he was with the team. And he played 55 games with the Sixers in 93, 94 and averaged 5.3 points per game, 11.2 minutes uh, a game and 4.1 rebounds. But um, he had slimmed down quite a bit. He looked pretty good 
from an athletic standpoint in in that season. I've watched some highlights on YouTube of him with that team in 93-94, and um, I'm pretty sure I also watched a full game when it was still up. And um, he was still moving pretty well. But, yeah, Orlando Woolridge and Moses Malone also wore that jersey. But, um, yeah, not a playoff team, um, not a good team in any of those years, but the jerseys are awesome. It's a very patriotic jersey, actually, City of Brotherly Love, obviously. And it's funny that you mentioned basketball cards, because in my mind I saw a card that I got very early on in my basketball fandom of him in that jersey from the 94-95 set. It was still the photos from the 94 season. So, yeah, I immediately pictured him in that jersey as well. And and I do like that one, too. Like you say, it was it's kind of overlooked because you have that classic jersey from the championship in 83, the Dr. J era, the earlier Barkley era, and then you had that that changing it up for a few years in the mid-90s, and then, of course, the, the Iverson era uh, rebrand in 97-98. But yeah, that is kind of an overlooked jersey. It's fun to see Chuck wearing that in his last year with the uh, with the 76ers. Wearing number 32 in honor of Magic Johnson, of course, in that last season in Philadelphia. And yeah, it is weird to see Moses Malone in that jersey. Kind of reminds you of Dan Marley's return to Phoenix and wearing that same jersey that... Steve Nash would go on to wear. You think of him in the Sunburst jersey. Yeah, exactly. And Dan Marley, um, in his return to Phoenix, still made some big shots for that team. Uh, he was still um, a capable player, but um, obviously he wasn't as good as he was you know, when in 92, 93 when he was with that team and prior. Actually, some of those late 80s Suns teams, Andrew, are some of my favorite to put on the on the floor using mods as well. You know, the ones where, you know, Tom Chambers was like a primary scorer and then they had Dan Marley. And I want to say they had um, Eddie Johnson as well and still had Kevin Johnson and whatnot. Those are super fun video games. Xavier McDaniel at one point. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Before we go on, a reminder that the NLSC podcast comes out every week on the NLSC, me-live.com, as well as our YouTube channel. We're also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast apps. If you're listening on any of those apps, we'd greatly appreciate a review. To keep up with the show and everything we're doing with basketball gaming in general, connect with us on social media. On Twitter and Facebook, we are The NLSC. We also have an Instagram, NLSC Basketball. And on YouTube, we're youtube.com slash NBA Live Series Center. Once again, visit us at nba-live.com, where in addition to the podcast, you'll also find all of our original content, as well as our forum and modding community. So we're on to your third favorite jersey of all time. And I'm actually going to say the Supersonics, the Space Needle jerseys, if you will. And that might be a controversial one because the one they had from 75 to 95 or thereabouts is iconic. A lot of people like their rebrand from the 2002 season through to the uh, end of the Supersonics. But, I mean, obviously you had Sean Kemp wearing those jerseys, Gary Payton. It's the branding they had in the NBA Finals. But I just thought that was such a great rebrand i mean their previous jersey is a great classic design iconic as i said but i love that they changed it up brought in a few other colors uh just looked so good going against the bulls in the 96 finals i personally like the ones prior so i might be in the minority there like i like the i actually um, think you're in the majority. 95 i think pe- most people actually do like the ones you like yeah i mean i like oh, them, really but yeah yeah, yeah no I, yeah. I, th- I think I, you are yeah yeah i like the uh 94 95 um jerseys the the ones that they you know also wore in the the late 80s early 90s the ones you know when they had uh the x-man xavier mcdaniel when they had um tom chambers when you know when they had dana barros and michael cage and uh all of that like i personally prefer that color palette and just that design in general i also like the floor better from past seasons than I do from that 95, 96 season moving forward. So, um, yeah, maybe I am in the majority. I don't know. I'd like to know what our listeners prefer out of those, um, out of those branding options. Yeah, I do actually think that those earlier ones, they do stand the test of time. They are very popular. In fact, you look at NBA Jam on Fire Edition, one of our favorite games, that is the jersey that the Sonics are wearing, although oddly they have the later logo. Oh yeah, that is that is a good point. Um, and we put that team on the floor all the time, all the time. So, 
Um, so here's some of my other favorites, some honorable mentions. The Iverson Carmelo Nuggets jerseys, which is like that light blue silky jersey that they wore in the mid to late 2000s. Obviously, they found more success in 08, 09 when, when Billups was there. But my favorite teams in that jersey was Iverson, Melo, uh, J.R. Smith, Marcus Camby, Nene, etc. So um, Kenyon Martin was also on that team as well. Love those jerseys. People can say what they want about the silky part of them, but uh, I actually thought they they stood out. And, Agreed. You know they're fun. They're fun to put on the floor. The orange Cavs jerseys, Andrew, that were worn from 1983 to 1987. Some memorable players that played in that jersey: World Be Free, Roy Hinson, John Bagley, a young Ron Harper. I want to say it was his rookie year. Hot Rod Williams, a rookie Brad Doherty, etc. Um, those are some of the more memorable players that wore that orange Cavs jersey and a, a fun note on this one people may not know this but it'd be a good good for trivia George Carl actually coached this team in 84 85 and 85 86 I actually did not know that before I looked this up that flies under the radar yeah and then there's a couple more so the San Diego Clippers powder blue jerseys that were worn from 1978 through 1982 83 and um in 82-83, it's one of the more fun video game teams. And again, they didn't perform well. They were 25-57 and 57 that year due to injuries. Bill Walton only played 33 games, etc. But this team had Terry Cummings, Tom Chambers, and Bill Walton, Andrew. Uh, they also had Craig Hodges, um, Lionel Hollins, etc. So they're super fun to put on the floor. I love that simple powder blue jersey design with San Diego on the front and whatnot. And before 82, 83 guys like world be free and Sven Nader also wore that Jersey. And they also had some cool red alternates that were worn in the 82, 83 season. And I have footage of the, uh, those being used on my at D for 384 channel. If you, if you put in at D for 384 clippers on X, formerly known as Twitter, you can find that video. And then just some others, the Toronto Raptors with the actual Raptor on the front. Um, the Phoenix Suns orange jerseys that they were wearing in the mid to late 2000s where it said PHX on the front. They were their, the Phoenix Suns alternates. Absolutely love those jerseys. And then also, I do love the early 2000s Orlando Magic jersey rebrand. And a lot of people remember the 0203 jerseys for the Orlando Magic because Tracy McGrady was on fire that season. He averaged 32.1 points per game in 75 games, 6.5 rebounds, 5.5 assists, 1.7 steals. And um, that team went 42 and 40 and took the Pistons in the first round to seven games, but lost. But um, I do love that Orlando Magic branding with all the stars on the jersey and whatnot so yeah those are just some of my favorite jerseys of all time there's obviously more but those are some of them we could go on and on obviously trying to keep it to a short list is is very difficult and i i love those magic jerseys as well i i do think of t-mac in them think of ewing in them actually he's uh, finally year in the league um and obviously i, I mostly pick and sean kemp andrew sean, sean kemp as well kemp. as he you was, said he was yes. on that 02 or 03 team his yeah. final year in the league as well the next year absolutely and of course i do picture Ewing mostly in a Knicks jersey and you know it's blasphemous for me to say but I do like the Knicks jerseys as well very classic design I'm a fan of the classic designs as well as the more creative ones particularly when they brought the uh, the black trim in in the mid to late 90s I thought that was a very nice touch to a classic design the other sacrilegious uh, jersey that I like being a Bulls fan is the teal Pistons jersey and a lot of people do dump on that jersey I get it but I do think it was a very creative rebrand it was something different it made them stand out having that different color than just the blue and red as they had before and I also remember it because back in 1997 I want to say Maccas that's McDonald's we call McDonald's Maccas in Australia um, they had the cups that had Grand Hill on them when the cup got cold the uh, designs would appear and the jerseys would actually light up. So that was kind of a cool collectible there, uh, circa 1997. 
Also, of course, the Bulls black pinstripe jerseys. I like the black ones without the pinstripes as well, but the pinstripes were definitely uh, different for their designs. Some of the ones that you mentioned, like the Rockets jerseys, the pajama jerseys, and of course the Phoenix Suns sunburst jersey, the ones they had through the 90s, uh, a great rebrand in 92 for the 92-93 season, went to the finals that year, obviously, again against the Bulls, Charles Barkley. When I think of Charles Barkley, I do often think of him in that sunburst jersey. Yeah, I think most people do, because that's when he won his MVP, they made the finals, etc. Um, and before we get to the community's responses, Andrew, so another fun video game team is actually that 99-2000 Rockets team that I mentioned earlier. And I know Barkley only played 20 games, but Steve Francis is on that roster, Andrew. So it's Charles Barkley, Hakeem Olajuwon, and rookie Steve Francis. So if you want kind of a slept-on team, um, you know, one that would be fun to use in video games or maybe to, you know, start a season with as like a what-if scenario, you know, what if Barkley was, you know, closer to his prime, what if he was healthy and whatnot – that is a super fun team to put on the floor because Steve Francis is always great to use in video games. Hakeem Olajuwon still had a little bit left in the tank and could still, you know, do some of his moves and, you know, had that mid-range shot and whatnot. And then you got Charles Barkley. So, um, yeah, I, I think kind of an underrated video game team. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And to that point, a lot of those great video game teams do have those memorable jerseys, the Sunburst Suns jerseys for the 97 season that Rex Chapman, Kevin Johnson, Jason Kidd, uh, and even the next year bringing Antonio McDice in those 97 or 98 Suns are great video game teams as well. And just to throw a couple more out there, the original Vancouver Grizzlies and Toronto Raptors jerseys, very memorable as well. People look at them and say, oh, they're cartoonish, especially the Raptors jersey, but it certainly made them stand out. And, and of course, the original Orlando Magic jerseys as well. As I said, the teams from the late 80s, the expansion teams that came along in the late 80s, I should say, they all had great branding. And those pinstripe Magic jerseys, you think of Shaq, you think of Penny, you think of Dennis Scott, Nick Anderson, etc. Again, not to overuse the word, Derek, but iconic. The 80s and 90s just had some awesome jerseys. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Um, so what did the community have to say? To the mailman. What an unbelievable dunk. So first up, we have Leon, a former NLC team member, longtime member of the community, uh, says the Red Bulls jersey, the second Raptors Road jersey, the rebrand in the 2000 season, and the Magic jersey you talked about with the Stars. There you go. So, um, yeah, I think that a lot of people love that early 2000s Magic jersey set with the Stars on them. And, you know, like the, the Bulls, like you stated, that's the the two three peats and just all the history that goes with those jerseys and all the highlights you've seen of that team in those jerseys and all the documentaries and everything. It's, it's almost impossible not to love those jerseys. Bucky T says, I have a tie, the early nineties Charlotte Hornets and the Vancouver Grizzlies Jersey two that I mentioned two that I love. It's funny. I, I talked about it on a previous NLC podcast when the Toronto Raptors and Vancouver Grizzlies were announced, I kind of balked at it. I was like, this is stupid, Grizzlies and Raptors. And then I saw the jerseys and I was like, oh my God, these are terrible. Like I hated them mm. at first. And then about a year or two later, um, I grew incredibly fond of the branding and the color schemes and even how busy – the jerseys were and how busy the courts were because if you remember correctly the grizzlies and <laughs> and raptors courts were also incredibly busy yeah kind of like the Gordy. you know the hornets court at the time you know with the inside the perimeter all being a color all of that stuff so um but yeah i love that branding now but when they first got announced for the nba the names and the jerseys and the courts i kind of like i didn't like it i felt the same way about the pelicans actually and it, it wasn't until I heard Sean Elliott on a Spurs broadcast really making fun of it that I kind of came around on it, like just almost to spite Sean Elliott. Because he was such a homer on commentary that it almost made me a fan out of spite. But not my favorite name. They do have some nice jerseys, though, I do have to say. I think the Pelicans is the worst name in the NBA, personally. Um, but they actually have probably my favorite alternate jersey in the NBA, that red mm. alternate jersey that they use. Um, I think that's probably my favorite in the current NBA. Roger Ward, one of the NBA Live 01 legends, of course, says the 90s, 2000s, Cavs black jersey, early 2000s, Timberwolves black jersey, Grizzlies, early 2000s jerseys, and the runner-up, Raptors and Bucks classic purple jerseys. And I need to mention the Timberwolves jersey as well, because that rebrand they did in 96 
for the 96 97 season they had it through to 2008 i want to say yeah i love that jersey of course associated with kg what do you think of the box jersey with the giant buck on it like you can remember ray allen and big dog glenn robinson wearing it and whatnot that is a very very 90s mm. jersey like super 90s style you know with the big logo and all of that what did you like those yeah, but I don't know if it's just nostalgia for that time because that was the jerseys that they were wearing when I really got into the NBA uh, around the mid-90s there. So it, it could just be associating it with that time. But I, I do like the uniqueness of it. I, that, is, that is what stands out to me about those 90s jerseys, especially the ones that came with the rebrands in the mid-90s, that they just did stand out so much that they were trying something a bit more ambitious without getting too crazy about it. Yeah, I'd like to know also, he mentions the Cavs. I know that um, Roger is a huge Cavs fan. I'd like to know what he thinks of those, you know, 94, 95 through um, 98, 99 Cavs jerseys and also what he thinks of those world be free orange Cavs jerseys from the 80s. I'm curious. And Studio 33 says, I always like the look of the 80s Lakers with their jerseys in home court. And then goes on to say, here are some of my all-time favorites in no particular order. Denver Nuggets, 82 to 93. That's the rainbow jersey, of course. Orlando Magic, 89 to 98. The black variant in particular. The original Raptors jersey, 95 to 99. The 76ers jersey from 97 to 2009. The Pacers from 1990 to 97. And the Timberwolves, 96 to 2008, which we just mentioned. Yeah, I, I think that um, that Nuggets jersey is not one of my favorites. It's, it's actually um, one of the ones I dislike the most. I'm not sure why the one from the... Um, the 80s and early 90s you think of alex english in that busy nuggets jersey i don't know if it's the color scheme or what but i was just never a fan of that um that jersey uh, the magic ones like you mentioned the black ones i think those are pretty classic uh he mentioned the 76ers from 97 to around 2008 um th- those weren't exactly through all of those years if you remember correctly in the in the mid 2000s they um the, the they got the silky jerseys right <laughs> they went with that um that silky black um wide shoulder jersey you can you can picture Iguodala wearing it you can picture chris weber when he went there in 0405 and then in 0506 wearing it um iverson obviously kyle corver um and i want to say something about those jerseys and I'm going to stay specifically of the 0506 season with the wide shoulders and whatnot. Um, I have a lot of fond memories of those jerseys for some reason. And Iverson is one of my favorite players of all time. And that, but that could be part of the reason, but I loved the look of those jerseys. I think they're that um, they were doing something different at that time in the mid nineties with the jerseys with, you know, making the material stand out a little bit more. Um, they did the same thing with the Dallas Mavericks. I think you remember the trash bag jerseys, right? Of course. But they were doing it also with other versions of the Dallas Mavericks jerseys as well. Um, like other color schemes, not just the trash bag color and whatnot. But yeah, I love those mid 2000 76ers jerseys. And it is interesting that they went with those wider shoulders, almost like a, a sleeveless tee rather than a, a rather than a tank, a singlet. Yeah, exactly. And um, but I also think again, it, it makes those teams more memorable, right? Sure. UTD sixteen bit says, "I'll go with these for the run." Hashtag bring back our Sonics, as I couldn't choose a green and yellow one. And he posts a photo of Kemp and Peyton in the Space Needle jerseys, as I called them. Yeah, I mean. That finals with the Bulls, you know, how successful that 95, 96 uh, Supersonics team was just the pieces that they had, um, that huge front line, right, of 6, 10 and over from small forward to center with that left shrimp, Sean Kemp and Irvin Johnson and whatnot. And then they had, you know, Sam Perkins coming off the bench like there are uh, the, the, a lot of memorable players and memorable results, right? Because of the success that they had. And, and Sean Kemp was one of the most exciting players in basketball at the time. So that's never going to surprise me. Garva says Supersonics 2007. So that final design they had and the Bulls striped away jersey 1996. Well, there you go. So you'll you'll always be happy when somebody mentions the Bulls of the mid-90s. Of course. Lots of nostalgia there for me. Devin and Avery both say the Mountain Jazz jerseys from 97 through to 2003. 
and again, uh, a lot of success in those jerseys, including making it to, you know, the NBA Finals and the in the iconic Jordan steal, and then you know his first send off, the the game winner, and whatnot. And, and I think that um, Karl Malone, even though they were getting older, you know, Karl Malone and John Stockton, they were still two of the best players in the league. You know, I've talked about it before. Stockton stats even at age 39 and 40 were just incredibly impressive um, from a points assists steals perspective, you know, how he was shooting from the floor and whatnot. And I think that the, that Jersey is obviously mostly memorable because of Stockton and Malone. And I actually do have an article about alternate jerseys coming out for way back Wednesday. Alternate jerseys and retro gaming is the uh, topic of that article that's coming out, I think uh, actually tomorrow when this podcast drops and that alternate they introduced in 1999, redoing the colors, that black jazz alternate, I actually kind of liked that because it really stood out from the, the main jerseys. Yeah, I think that it also separates kind of the golden age for, of the jazz into just kind of like a new era, mm. right? Like, I think that, um, you know, when you think of those black jerseys, you think of, you know, Stockton and Malone, definitely you know, longer in the tooth, right? You think that, you know, of the team transitioning into a new age and era, um, as opposed to before they had that alternate, you know, they were, you know, every year a threat to make the NBA finals and whatnot. But yeah, no, I like those jerseys as well. Another writer says top two, uh, Vancouver era, Teal Grizzlies away jerseys and the finals era, Seattle Supersonics away jerseys. Another vote for that one. Also says others that come to mind are the Antonio McDice Navy Nuggets jersey, Dikembe era Black Hawks jersey with a giant hawk, early 90s Pacers, 74 Warriors the City, and Buffalo Braves away. Some very fun throwbacks there, going back into the 70s, of course. And yeah, that Hawks jersey, again, another very unique 90s jersey that you have that big design, like that big buck on the, the uh, Milwaukee Bucks jersey, having that big hawk there and that gradient, the black going into the red. No, I, I, yeah, I like that choice. And who doesn't think of Steve Smith? Of course. Right. Yeah. Like I, I think of Steve Smith who had his best years in that jersey. I also want to point out because he mentioned the Grizzlies. If we cover our favorite courts of all time, uh, one of them is going to be that 0304 Grizzlies court. I absolutely love that court design with, you know, the the big paw like holding the ball in as the center court logo. And whatnot and just the whole color scheme and everything i love putting the 0304 grizzlies on the court for that reason not for the jerseys but for that amazing court design and jason williams too of course well jason williams and stromile swift obviously. Oh, definitely, but they yeah. also had uh but they also had paul gasol on that team shane battier i want to say mike miller so there's definitely some good pieces on that team that make them fun i think james posey is also on that squad so um yeah quite a few fun pieces and one more response from Twitter, or X, as it's now known. Uh, and we love that rebrand, Derek, as we've said before. Uh, one more response from X. Uh, Titch NBA says the Rockets from 95 to 2003. Uh, yeah, I mean, as much hate as that jersey gets, I think a lot of us actually really like it. I, I do too. And I think some people are afraid to admit it, Andrew. I think there's some people in denial out there. Um it's also like i stated before just so many memorable players don that jersey even if some of them were older like you know drexler akeem and barkley when they formed that squad in 96 97 but um yeah i think that some people are in denial that's what i think i think it's a great jersey i think the court was awesome as well and um i love it so jumping over to facebook for a few responses here kieran says the mid to late 90s tim rules jersey with the trees white black or blue version any are fine closely followed by 90s orlando magic pinstripes and i mentioned both of those jerseys and i think you and i we both think of players from that era in those jerseys uh, kg became one of my favorite non-bulls during that time i think of that highlight from the 97 season where he went up and did that huge putback of james robinson's miss where he james hollywood robinson of course went up and grabbed it brought it down to belt height and then put it back yeah just that's that's the jersey that i think of uh kg in and again Shaq and penny in those 90s magic pinstripes the wolves were going nuts with the trees at the time for their court design they had trees going all the way around the out of bounds like all the way around the um, outside perimeter of the court and my memories about that court actually are related to the 
oh three oh four season so that those jerseys and that and that branding and whatnot and you know Latrell Sprewell, Kevin Garnett, Wally Zerbiak, Michael Lola with Candy, Sam Cassell, that incredibly formidable Timberwolves team. And my my it's one of my brothers, Nick, it's one of his go to teams in every basketball video game where they're present, uh, because his favorite player of all time is Kevin Garnett. That is funny to think about. A lot of trees for Minnesota. Trees. They went nuts with the trees. Yeah. They went absolutely nuts. It worked. It worked. But yeah, it is funny to think about for sure. Chad says the Hawks jerseys after the ones we were talking about before, the planar Hawks design and that return to the uh, red, yellow, and uh, and white. Yeah, the Hawks have had actually some great jerseys over the years. I still love the 80s Hawks jerseys with, you know, prime Neek, young prime neek i I think that um those are incredibly memorable um and and, you know you even go back further and you think about the um hawks branding when pete maravich was there and instead of you know red is what we know as the hawks you know from our childhood and later they had that incredibly awkward green um with like a blue and white stripe on it and everything and you can picture in your head you know pete maravich wearing that jersey for that squad then another version of that which was blue but with like a green and white stripe so um yeah some interesting atlanta hawks branding from the early 70s martin's top three are the 99 toronto raptors 98 miami heat alternate jerseys the red ones and the 95 Atlanta magic away black now, think about this. Do you think that that Orlando Magic jersey combination would be even close to as memorable if they didn't have Shaq and Penny? Oh, definitely not. No. Yeah, that's why I said the players make a big difference. Um, you know, like that Clippers powder blue jersey, I probably wouldn't be as fond of it if that season didn't exist with Tom Chambers, Terry Cummings, and Bill Walton all donning it. When it comes to those 90s Magic jerseys, do you prefer the black away or the blue alternate that became the primary away jersey I think 90, around 96, 97. I prefer the blue. Mm, yeah, I like the blue as well. Blue is my favorite color, so I'm a bit uh, a bit biased in that regard. There you go. Actually, it's mine too. So here, there you go. We have something else in common. And you mentioned the Dominic Wilkins era Hawks jerseys. That is one of Royce's favorite jerseys, along with the Emerald City Sonics jerseys from the early 90s. That's another one that you mentioned. The Hornets with the pinstripe from the early to mid-90s, as I mentioned. The Sunburst Suns jersey from 93 onwards. And the Home Whites for the Bulls in the six championship seasons. Also has some honorable mentions. The Celtic Screen from the Russell to Bird era. Uh, the old Lakers gold jersey, the ones they wore from the Western Wilt era to the Shaq and Kobe era, the early Shaq and Kobe era before the rebrand in the uh, championship season of 2000. Yeah, I think that um, Celtics Green and Lakers gold, I think that um, those are always going to hold up a special place in real basketball fans' hearts, right? Because of how that changed the 80s and how that changed the NBA. And even prior to that, you know, with the Celtics' dominance in the um, the late 50s and 60s, and then obviously the Lakers being super formidable with Jerry West and Elgin Baylor, and then you know later on with Wilt Chamberlain, and then they had Kareem through the 70s and whatnot. And people forget, too, that um, there's so much focus on Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, and Kevin McHale and that successful Celtics team in the 80s. Not enough attention is drawn to how great the Celtics were for a good part of the 70s as well, right? With Hondo, um, John Havlicek, and Dave Cowens, and Joe Joe White. Yeah, Uh, yeah. just so many great players have donned those Celtics and Lakers jerseys that there's just, they're always going to hold a special place in real basketball fans' hearts. Such storied franchises, obviously, yeah. Jumping over to the Discord now, Pep Pep says, easier question, please. Uh, Pep knows jerseys, Pep loves jerseys, and mods them extremely well. Yeah, he's an amazing modder. Um, he's just made so many great jerseys for the various classic seasons, mods, and whatnot for the different video games on PC. So um, we really appreciate his work. And, and I did notice, too, that Ju- Juicy Shack Meat also mentioned that his favorite non-All-Star jerseys, Andrew, were the, the, the 90s Starburst jerseys. And he shows a, um, a picture of Kevin Johnson and Charles Barkley in those away jerseys. And I think it's funny that he, he 
he really appreciates the all-star jerseys, obviously. Um, and there were some memorable ones and we could go, we could do a whole episode on, on those, Andrew. Of course. But he said for all, he says for all-star unis can't go wrong with a timeless look in you know, for the 2003 jerseys. And he shows, um, that red West Jersey where it says NBA all-star and the number in the middle. And then, the white East Jersey. And I, I do agree. And, and of course, who do we think of when we think of those 2003 jerseys, we think of Jordan and his all-star appearance in his last season. Oh, absolutely. And that was a nice throwback. They did that year to the, uh, to the eighties and early nineties when they had the, those all-star jerseys. Uh, I think that's a very eighties inspired Jersey actually. And I like those jerseys again, those classic all-star jerseys. I actually do have a fondness for the ones they tried to bring in, in the mid nineties, and look, I know people like to rip on the 95 and 96 All-Star jerseys, the Cactus jersey in Phoenix, the Chili Pepper jersey in San Antonio, but I like that they went with something different for those two years. And of course, I do like that for a few years there, they went with players wearing their original team jerseys, but I was glad to see them bring back special All-Star jerseys for 2003 onwards. And 2003, having that classic throwback to the 80s, uh, yeah, I love that. I think my favorite look is still all of the players wearing their official team jersey. However, I, I think for for the All-Star Games, I think that, however, there were some really unique designs, like you said, in 95, 96, um, you know, with the um, with the pepper somehow holding a basketball, like twirling a basketball, like the end of the pepper. Um, I think that a lot of those designs were very unique. Uh, I, there was also the um, the 94, 95 um, one with the cactus on it, uh, you know famously worn by Shaq and whatnot. Like, I, I do like some of those designs, and I, and I think that it makes those All-Star games special. And to that end, I do appreciate the ultimate jerseys of the 2000s, that they were trying something a little bit different there. As I'll go into detail in my Wayback Wednesday article, I find myself putting those alternates on the floor, selecting those alternates when I retro game these days. And I do appreciate even modern designs that do try something a little bit out of the box with the city or earned edition uniforms because because of some of the unique designs of the 90s. And again, we do see those throwbacks. As much as people do like to rip on 90s styles, they are coming back in many ways. So no, I, I do appreciate that as well. Yeah, I, I think that, um, I'll say it again, I think that a lot of the 90s style is coming back. And I think that the NBA has been trying to highlight that in a big way over the last couple of years even something like short shorts kind of came back right yeah they're not as short as they were when stockton um you know famously wore them in the 80s and you know a lot of those teams were wearing um short shorts shorts in fact the majority of teams were but they're kind of now getting to the point where they're a little bit longer but not much longer than what they were in the 80s so I, I think that a lot of that style definitely is coming back we don't need those tj ford baggy shorts as well the joke ones he wore that for, was pushing it for the media day <laughs> and by the way i gotta point something out to our listeners playing basketball in the early mid 2000s when you went to an outdoor court or an indoor court it doesn't matter where where when you went to go play pickup baggy shorts was the thing yes like, Everybody was wearing those shorts. Everybody was wearing the shorts that went past the knees. Um, sometimes they were wearing the shorts that went down to their – close to their ankles, like in that TJ Ford picture that you're mentioning and whatnot. And if you were somebody that showed up with shorter shorts and your clothes weren't baggy, you were looked at weird, old, right? Old head. Like so people would make comments. Yeah, well, people would make – yeah, exactly. People would make comments or, or be like, dude, how can you wear those and all of that stuff? So – that style was just so big in the early mid 2000s um and even me i'll admit it i've, I've had quite a few of pairs of baggy shorts in my time like i've owned quite a few bear, pairs as a result almost to the point of uh, mc hammer parachute pants yeah very close very close if you cut mc hammer's parachute pants off right above the ankle it would be very close <laughs> But thank you to everybody who responded to Derek's question. Once again, we love having this interaction each and every week. And it's fun to look back at these jersey designs, Derek, because it's a big part of our fandom, our basketball fandom, basketball culture. And of course, we associate it with games as well. You know, selecting these as throwbacks in recent games, playing the old games when they, these jerseys were current. Yeah, there's so much nostalgia here. 
Yeah, I love it. And uh, thank you to the community for their interaction with the mailbag question uh, this week. Uh, like I said, we could do a whole show on courts as well, like our top three favorite NBA courts of all time, honorable mentions and whatnot. And that may well be something that we circle back to. And we also had some other great topic suggestions from our listeners from the other question you threw out this past weekend. So we will definitely circle back to some of those as well. With that being said, that has brought us to the end of this week's show. As always, we thank you for tuning in, and we invite you to join us again next week and every week, either on the NLSC, nb-live.com, our YouTube channel, or your podcast app of choice. In the meantime, please connect with us on social media. That's where you can get in touch with us, and of course, stay up to date with all of our content. So Derek, go ahead and plug the handles. Hey, you can reach me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at d for 3 g and at d for 3 84 I'm also on YouTube, d for 3 and on the NLSC, d for 3 I am Andrew in the forum and Andrew NLSC on X. The NLSC is on X and Facebook at the NLSC. We're also NLSC Basketball on Instagram and Threads. We're on YouTube at NBA Live Series Center. And of course, keep a look to the NLSC itself, nb-live.com, for everything we do for basketball video games. So, thank you once again for tuning in. And until next time, I'm Andrew. And I'm Derek. Go get buckets, everyone. <laughs>